I'm going to look through some examples of how to compute the measures of average and measures of variation for a data set. So I just went online and got some data. The data I have is on new vehicle selling prices in the U.S. from 2016 to 2021. So you can see my data over here. And first, we're going to get the measures of average. So we're going to compute the mean, the median, the mid-range, and the mode. Those are the four measures of average. And I can compute uh, them directly in Excel. I'm going to show Excel or Sheets. The commands work the same. I happen to be in Excel right now. But if you're in Google Sheets, the commands are going to be the same commands. And then I'll show the same thing with uh, Desmos at the end. So if you want to look at Desmos instead, you can fast forward to the second half of this and see how to do them there. All right. So in Excel or Sheets, you're going to start your command line with equals. And there's not a command for me. You can see as I type the word mean, nothing pops up. So I do need to remember that the command in Excel and Sheets for mean is actually average. Even though we now know better, we know that mean is only one of the measures of average, the command is still average for mean in this software. Then I'm just going to select the data, click and drag, close my parentheses, and hit the Enter key. I've got my measure of average. All right, I'm going to just decrease the decimal places just so it's not so big. Looks good. Two is fine. Uh, or three, whatever you'd like to have for your rounding there. So I've just decreased those a little bit. All right, so I'm going to do the median next. The command for median is median, fortunately. Uh, notice how when I start to type this, I only have to type a few letters, and I can see that the command shows up below. I'm hitting the tab key on my keyboard to have it fill in the rest of the command. And that's why the font changed right there, because it filled the command in by selecting that option. So median. And again, I will select the range of values that we wish to use. Okay, mid-range. If I try typing mid-range, I can get mid, which returns characters from the middle of a text stream. That is not what I want. And mid-range brings up nothing. So I cannot do mid-range with one line command. So I go back to the book definition on mid-range. It says in the book that to find the mid-range, we're going to add up the largest and smallest values and divide them by two. Okay, so I can go through my list and I can figure out which one is the largest and which one is the smallest, and I can divide those by two. Or if I would like to use the functions of Excel to help me do this, I can. This is not necessary. You can just take those two numbers, add and divide by two. That's okay. But if I wanted to use some of the features in Excel, I could use parentheses and ask it to locate the maximum value in this range. That's the largest. Plus the minimum value in this range. That's the smallest. Close the parentheses on the operation and then divide by two. So that's going to get me the mid-range, or just in your own calculator, add up the largest and smallest and divide by two. Okay, for mode, we're going to use mode.molt. Excel has a mode command. I'm gonna highlight and hit enter. NA means that there is no mode for this data set. So we can just uh, clarify what that means. There is not a mode. You can see that because none of these numbers are identical to any other. Okay, so that's on our measures of average. Got those taken care of, our measures of average. Let's go next to our measures of variation. Uh, the first measure of variation that we talked about in the book was the range. Then we had the standard deviation. Then we had the coefficient of variation. Oops, hold on, I got one too many E's in there. There we go, coefficient of variation. Okay, uh, so let me expand this just a little so that my numbers will appear and my labels will stay there. Range. 
Okay, so go back to your definition for range. Range is the largest value minus the smallest value. That's the definition in the book for range. So again, you can just use a calculator and subtract the largest value minus the smallest value. Or if you would like to get Excel to do this for you, range is not one of the commands that recognize. You can see that this is something about probability and trial results. This is not the thing that we're looking for. But I can ask for the largest value, the maximum value, minus the minimum value, select your set again, and then that's the range. Okay. Uh, standard deviation. This is a command that we can use. The abbreviation is stdev. And we have those two choices, stdev.p and stdev.s. Now, for the data set that I am showing an example of right now, this is a sample. This is a sample because I do not have all of the data on the price of new vehicles for all years. I just have them from 2016 to 2021. I don't have all data. I have a sample of data. I have data from a few years. So I'm going to use the stdev.s command. And I'm going to select my range. And I get my standard deviation. If I want fewer decimal places, I can drop those back down. Like I was dropping these down to three. All right? Coefficient of variation. There is not a fun command. As you can see, when you start to type it, you don't get a fun command like we do for mean, median, mode, and standard deviation. So we need to go back to the definition. The definition in the textbook for coefficient of variation asks us to take the standard deviation and divide it by the mean. Since I already have the standard deviation right here, I can click on that and then divide that by the mean and click on the mean over here. Okay, and then I can hit enter or you can just grab a calculator and type those things. Just divide those two numbers. It doesn't have to be in Excel. Just divide them and write in the standard deviation. We also know that the coefficient of variation is usually expressed as a percent because it is the relative deviation. So I can either do this manually by converting this into a percent, or I can convert it into a percent in Excel by using the percent style number formatting key here. And I don't like the way it's rounded now, so I'm going to increase the number of decimal places. Uh, so yeah, those are how to compute the measures of average and measures of variation in Excel. Uh, these ones are for sample, as we mentioned over here. I'm going to emphasize what we did over here was for sample. The only one that is going to be different on a sample versus the population is the standard deviation. The others are going to be identical. If you have a population, you'll use the stdev.p command rather than the stdev.s command. Now, if you did have a population, or say you had both a sample and a population, you would do all this for the sample and do all this for the population. For the population, make sure that you are selecting all values in the population, whether that's 100 values or however many values it is. But when you're selecting the range that goes inside of the command, you're choosing the values in your list. You're choosing the sample by selecting those values, or you're choosing the population by highlighting and selecting all of those values. That's our difference between how we'll get population versus sample. Now, on this example, I only have a sample, and that's why you're only seeing me do this once. All right, so this ends the Excel portion. I'm going to continue my screen share, and um, we're going to look at how to do this in Desmos. So first, I'm just gonna copy my data and paste it into Desmos, into a list. If you had both a sample and a population, you would paste them both over and maybe have a list that you would call S for sample and a list that you'd have called P or something for population, A, B, I don't care what you name them. I'm just gonna name mine S to help clarify that this is a sample, okay? So I just pasted it in. You can just type them if you want. It's a square bracket, each element in the list, comma, each other. All right, so we're gonna do the measures of average, first of all. And so 
the measures of average, mean, median, mode, and mid-range, you can see in the functions area that mean and median have their own command. I don't have a command for mid-range and I don't have a command for mode. So I can use the max and min commands like we did in Excel to help me get the mid-range or I can just do it myself. Okay, so uh, first of all, the mean, you can type mean or click the button. It's the mean of the data set S, 37.148. The median of, of set S, uh, mid-range, I'm going to write in a note mid-range because I don't have a command that already has called it, so it's less obvious what I'm doing in the next line. And so we are going to do the, make a fraction here, we're going to do the maximum of S plus the minimum of S, and we're going to divide them by two. So that one's the mid-range. And then for mode, there's not a command here, so I'm going to have to just look. And again, if you didn't want to use the maximum minimum command, you don't have to. You would just need to identify what the lowest and highest values are. And you're going to take your highest value plus your lowest value and divide by two. So obviously the number is the same, whether you use the commands for max and min or you just locate them yourself. Okay. Okay. So for mode. Uh, go ahead and look at your data set and just, you have to do this by yourself. You have to look and see if there are any numbers that are identical. And I can see that there is no mode because there are no uh, repeated values. Okay. So there's no mode. Um, so those are my measures of average. All right, so I'm going to just help myself with some organization here. I'm making a folder and I'm actually going to rename this folder as my measures of average. I'm going to put my mean, median, mode, mid-range all in it. So then I can collapse it and then I can see my data set up there just for my organization. So I'm going to do a new folder and I'm going to do the measures of variation. All right, so we have our range. Range does not have a fun command, just like it did in Excel, but we know that we need to take the maximum value minus the minimum value. So we can do it that way, or you can just type your maximum value minus your minimum value and just do it more by hand that way comes out the same so great okay then we're going to do our uh, standard deviation this one does have a command and the standard deviation command if you're in a sample is just st dev if you're in a population it's st dev p we talked before that what I have here is a sample, so I'm going to use the regular stdev command. If you had all of the data from your data set, if you selected all of it, pasted all of it, had your population list, then you do stdevp. As you can see your deviation here. All of these numbers, by the way, should be matching the ones that we see in Excel. If I can get them to both show up in the same window, right? It's matching. That's my standard deviation. That's my range, the numbers come out the same. And then I need the coefficient of variation. And so I know that to get that, I take my standard deviation number divided by my mean number. And I get my coefficient of variation. And so I'm going to convert that into a percentage by moving the decimal two spaces. And then I can choose to round this a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna pop that in a note real quick so I can put the percent sign on it. There we go. All right. Um, so those are our measures of average and our measures of variation in decimals.